Hello guys and welcome back to another video on my channel. Now today's video I'm going to be reviewing the championship season and also giving you guys my player of the season as well. But before I get on with the video guys can we drop a like on this video. Comment down below your player of the season and let me know your thoughts about the whole season in general. And also guys if you haven't already make sure you become a member on my channel now. I've made it possible for you guys to become members. So if you become a member you get exclusive perks for my channel but if you don't want to become a member but you're still new to the channel make sure you subscribe it's completely free so let's get on with the video so i'm going to start off by talking about before the season started we had graham jones you know first time as a manager you know we didn't know what he was going to do basically we did not know what he was going to do and i think he went about things the complete wrong way like a new manager would do when he's not experienced enough being the top man in a job he's had a very successful career as an assistant manager but this time round as like manager it just hasn't worked out for him and i do believe he should have done a lot better with this squad now when fans were calling for his head like during the season i thought it was kind of harsh at the time but now looking back at it i honestly do believe he should have done a lot better with this group of players. Now I do understand during the first six months he had it hard due to key players being out injured and not having Carter Vickers until January, but I still believe he should have done a little bit more and we should have made the most of our summer recruitment. We should have done a little bit better in my opinion. But anyway, at the start of the season, it was one of the hardest starts on paper than any other team. On paper, Luton had the hardest start. And I felt we did okay. There were some games where I think we should have done a little bit better. But then there were some games which I didn't think we would get any points from. So we kind of made up for it. At the start of the season, Graham Jones did not get it right with the fans. You know, you don't like come out in the interviews after the game and say like budgets. Um, we're relying on certain players to keep us up. That's not what Luton fans want to hear. We've never actually heard that from previous managers. So when a manager just comes out and say in these interviews, little Luton, you don't really want to hear that from a manager, do you? You don't want to hear your own manager calling the club small. And I don't know why he did that. And I think he went about that the complete wrong way. And for me as well, not clapping supporters. I'm a firm believer in managers should clap supporters. It doesn't take much. All you've got to do is go around the stadium and clap. Graham Jones, he never did that. Literally, as soon as the game finished, straight down the tunnel. Rarely clapped the supporters. Sometimes he had no choice because he walked past us. He never did what Nathan Jones did and actually go around the whole stadium and clap, which I felt was a massive mistake by Graham Jones. And that straight away put the fans against him. Some of the fans did not like him because of that. So he didn't really start well being a Luton Town manager. Another bad mistake which Graham Jones did at the start of the season was starting Saluga. I felt Shea should have started. Shea won Golden Glove the season before. You know, why did he not deserve to start the season? Yes, I know we've just broken our record transfer signing on Saluga, but Saluga's new to the league. He needs to, like, adjust and get used to it. And when we were starting Saluga, he was living in a hotel. So why didn't we not just give it to Shea, give Saluga a bit of time to, like, find a house bring his family over, get used to watching English football and then throw him in. No, we didn't do that. We just rushed him and that cost us a few times. And honestly, I do believe if he was a lot more settled in the country, in the side, he would never have made those mistakes. Like the remaining games in the season, you know, he was very solid. You rarely made a mistake and that's what it should have been like throughout the whole season. But no, we rushed him into that starting eleven. And that caused us a few problems and cost us a few points. Another factor on why I believe we didn't start well under Graham Jones. We had no defensive midfielder. We were playing Martin Craney there who can play in multiple positions. But he got injured quite a lot due to his age and that. We didn't bring in a defensive mid. We tried to play Butterfield there. Didn't quite work. Tony Cliff there. Played Pelly there. We should have brought in a defensive midfielder. It wasn't until January we then started to look like a better side because Glenn Ray was back fit. He was ready to come into the side and play a lot of football. But we should have brought in a defensive midfielder to help us protect that back fight because that was one of the main reasons on why we were conceding a lot of goals. We never had like someone protecting that back five. So during that summer recruitment, we should have brought in a defensive midfielder. 
even on loan for six months or on a free signing. We should have brought someone in who could play that role perfectly and we didn't and that obviously cost us a bit. We did, however, during the start of the season, get our first away win and then our first home win. We got back-to-back -back wins against Barnsley and Huddersfield. And to be fair, looking back at it, very important wins because no one expected Huddersfield to do it as bad as they have done since like the start of the season. So that was a very good three points against them. And obviously, Barnsley, you expect us to perform a little bit better against them as they went up with us at the time. So they were two fantastic performances against those two sides. And don't forget as well, Blackburn away was a fantastic performance. We were very good that day. But after that game, it all went downhill. But it wasn't until like October, November time where things started to like turn really bad for us. We just couldn't get wins. We were conceded too many goals and we just didn't look like we were ever going to score a goal in certain games. We couldn't hack playing two games a week, which was really strange because under Nathan, we were very good at that. But under Graham, we just looked shattered. We looked knackered. I don't know what was going on behind the scenes, but we just couldn't play two games a week for some weird reason. Like when we had that one game a week, we looked a lot better side. But when we had two games a week, we struggled massively. Now, the reason why Luton were in like the bottom six, like from the October period until like the end of the season was because from like October time, we only won two games out of 13. Two games out of 13. That's what's killed us this season. If we never done that, we would be nowhere near the bottom six. However, if we would have got two wins and a draw, we would have been like solid mid-table. So for me, looking back at it now, Graham Jones should have done a lot better with these group of players because we weren't that far away from these like mid-table sides. So really, what could have happened if we started the season with Nathan Jones? Definitely would have been a lot safer, a lot sooner if we had Nathan from the start. What Nathan managed to achieve with these group of players is something which Graham Jones should have done at the start of the season, if I'm honest. Now, I've already mentioned it, Glenn Ray and Carter Vickers, those two players completely turned our season around. And for me, my player of the season is Carter Vickers. For me, you have to give the player who's had the biggest impact in the side. And I believe Carter Vickers has had the biggest impact in the team. Without Carter Vickers, I do not believe he would have stayed up this season in the championship. He's been rock solid. He's formed a very good partnership with Sonny Bradley. And I really hope that we get to keep him for next season. On a season loan deal or six month loan deal, hopefully we get to see him back is what I'm trying to say. I don't think we'll get him on a permanent, but I would love to see him back at Luton Town. For me, he's my player of the season. So although we had a really bad like first half of the season, we had a very good second half of the season. From February, we only lost two games out of 15, which is fantastic form. That's like top end, like top 10, like championship form, nearly playoff form. So we've done it really well to only lose two games out of 15. Something which we should have done a lot more in the first half of the season, you know. Grind out results, get a few more draws. We kept losing too many games. We didn't get, like, the draws, which we should have done. We always used to make things really hard for ourselves all the time because what we used to do throughout the season, we are going at half-time being level. And then in the first five minutes or in the first ten minutes of that second half, we would concede one or two goals, and that would damage us completely and then we're just playing catch up all the time and we did that quite a lot throughout the season overall this season has been a successful season the objective this year was to obviously not get relegated objective achieved we've done what we needed to do next season for me we have to try and avoid a relegation battle we kind of want a boring season now as a Luton Town fan we never do a boring season it's always something's happened in a certain season, especially since I've been going to Luton. I've either seen a relegation, playoff battle, promotion. I've never seen Luton like have a boring season. But for next season in the championship, I feel like we need a boring year. We just need to be a mid-table team. We just need to avoid a relegation battle is what I'm trying to say. Let's not in the last six games of next season, be scared that we're going to go down. Hopefully we can be an established championship side for years to come. So that is my objective for next season, to try and avoid 
like a relegation battle. So I've pretty much like gave you guys my overall like opinion and review of the current season. I think Graham Jones should have done a lot better with these group of players. However, he did improve certain players. I felt Pelly improved under Graham Jones and I also felt Harry Cornick improved under Graham Jones. Harry Cornick just needs to sort his finishing out. If he can sort his finishing out, then he's a top, top player in the championship and he will score a lot more goals as he does create those opportunities for himself to score. So for me, if Harry can like sort out his like, scoring boots, that would be brilliant for next season. James Collins, his first year in the championship has done very well. Pelly yet again has adapted to another league. You know, he's adapted three times now and fair play to Pelly. He's still here at this football club, still playing week in, week out trying to put those decent performances in for Luton. Sluger as well, done fantastic towards the end of the season. He kept more clean sheets, making really good saves. He made the odd mistake. I feel like he's learning, and I also believe he's still going to improve for more years to come. Not the best start, but a better finish from him. James Bree as well, fantastic towards the end of the season. I think the one mistake as well with James Bree was we played him left back. He wasn't comfortable playing left back. And because of our injury crisis, which we had down that left hand side with Galloway and Dan Potts being injured, Paul Bree had to play left back, which isn't his position. And he got slated quite a lot by the fans because he was out of position. He was meant to play right back. And when he did play right back and he had someone in front of him like Harry Cornick, he was a completely different player. And we saw that under Nathan Jones. So I wouldn't mind bringing back James Bree for next season. And I think it's very likely because Aston Villa stayed up in the Premier League. So we could see James Bree back at Luton. And I know some of the players want James Bree back and Carter Vickers back because Sonny Bradley came out and said that he would love to see those two players back at Luton. But of course, full credit goes to Nathan Jones in keeping us up. He managed to get the best out of this group of players. And honestly, I do believe we could have finished solid mid-table if Nathan Jones started like the season being manager of Luton Town. But obviously, things have happened in the past. We need to kind of forget what's happened in the past and think about the future with Nathan Jones. And fingers crossed, the journey can continue under Nathan Jones and Luton can become a much better side for the future. So there you have it guys, that is the end of the video. Hopefully you did enjoy it. Drop a like on this video if you did. Comment down below your thoughts about this season as a whole. Who is your player of the season? Remember, my player of the season is Carter Vickers. I think he's had the biggest impact in the team. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Like I said, if you want to become a member of my channel, the link is down below. If you haven't already guys, make sure you are following me across all my social media. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Till I get up, time is barely on our side